Hi, in this tutorial video, we are going to go over processor in loop simulation with PSIM. What does processor in loop uh, mean? Well, essentially, uh, I'm going to run uh, this simulation, but uh, I'm going to run it so that this control algorithm that we have to find here is going to run on a off-board uh, DSP. Uh, and so the control code is going to execute on the DSP, but it's still going to control the power stage in PSIM. So PSIM is going to handle simulating the power stage, but the DSP is going to simulate the control code, so it's going to run a C code on the DSP. We can see that I have my TI control card DSP plugged into one of their development kits uh, connected via USB to my laptop, uh, which is what my test setup is. So the code will run on this DSP and it will control a power stage simulated by PSIM on my laptop. Uh, and that's what's set up over here. So this control code is now uh, being linked over here and then the power stage is, is up here. So let's just uh, run this simulation and see what happens. As I start the simulation, what happens is a script uh, will pop up and uh, it's going to connect to the CPU and then we can see that the program is loading. We can see some breakpoints and variables are being set and then as it's running we can run the uh, runtime graph window here and we can see what's going on. We'll just, we'll just wait for it to finish and then we'll look and compare the results of the of the results here. So, okay, let's look at these waveforms. There's the three load currents, and let's merge these results with the uh, regular uh, simulation. And let's look at uh, just the A's at the same time. And we can look at the B's at the same time. And we can look at the C's at the same time. So they overlap nicely. So let's uh, look at how the simulation was set up and also dive into a little bit more detail of how all of this works. Uh, the first place to start is uh, with the code using SimCoder. Uh, so let's just generate the code and, and have a look at what's going on here. So here we can look at the code that has been generated from this simulation. Uh, importantly, we can identify certain things that are going on. We've got our PWM uh, gating signals being generated here, and we've got our ADC sampling over here. So if we look at the code here, and it's all in, inside of an interrupt routine um, that will be generated called task. So task is running this main control loop. So we can see that there's um, a get ADC call at the very beginning, which is defining uh, these three signals right here and then we can see zero order hold, order hold one and zero order hold two right here so this is zero order hold one zero order hold two are being assigned here and then these are being passed to this uh, Clark transformation right here so we can see ACAB1 ACAB1 and we can see that it's uh, then from there, we're going to go to this alpha beta to DQ transformation, uh, which is called ABDQ1. So if we keep cruising along a little bit, we'll run into ABDQ1 right here. And it's taking pins from ACAB1. So we can see that this is this is just basic control code. Uh, this um, these, these transformations are being done. We get into... Uh, the controller here for ID, the controller here for IQ, and then at the back end, uh, this is passed to uh, this the PWM, so AB, ABC1. So this uh, back from uh, alpha beta to ABC, uh, it's getting past this PWM block to get generate PWM signals. So what processor and loop is going to do is instead of, so this code is going to execute on the DSP, but we're going to overload these get ADC statements, and we're going to overload, uh, and we're going to map these 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 pins, these signals out to to PSIM, so that instead of running uh, uh, and trying to control an actual piece of hardware, it's going to come and be mapped out and and, and control this simulated hardware. So let's look at, at what the processor and loop block is doing. So we can see there's a couple things going on. Uh, the first thing is we've got our ADC inputs are coming into the block here. So we've got FPSIM ADC1, FPSIM ADC1 underscore 1, and FPSIM underscore 2. So the, the main ones that we're concerned with here are, are, are here. So these are these ADCs. So instead of this 
Um, this statement, instead of it getting something from the analog to digital converter, again, there's nothing on the analog pins. We need to map PSIM to this particular variable. And then on the output side, because we're, we're not getting any gating signals from the DSP, we need to generate our own gating signals here. We need to map these pins to, um, to an output so that we can do our own conversion. So we see AB, ABC1 underscore one and underscore two are what these signals are down here, underscore one and underscore two. So those have been mapped to here. So uh, all we need to do is to, is to link the variables from the code to uh, variables in PSIM, and then we should be able to run it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we'll open this up in Code Composer Studio and we'll start making the edits. Okay, so I've got our project uh, imported into Code Composer Studio here. And uh, now I'm going to edit this code so that it will run a uh, processor and loop. So there's a couple things we need to do here. First off, we can see that it's uh, the date stamp is the same here, October 28th at 3 o'clock, October 28th at 3 o'clock. So uh, what I'm going to do is... Again, we need to overload or remap these variables here because there's going to be no information on the analog to digital uh, pins. So we need to comment these out so that uh, nothing, um, so that the, we're not doing an ADC get. Uh, and then the next thing we need to do is we need to reassign uh, these variables. So they're being declared right now um, in here. So we see. ADC1, uh, so they're being de declared as default types inside of this interrupt routine. We need to make the, them global variables. So we just need to uh, redefine the declaration of these uh, so that they are uh, global variables up here. So we can go default type and uh, just copy and paste them uh, out of the, uh, the list here. So we want uh, PSIM ADC1. And we should uh, also declare all these to be to be zero to start with. So those are the inputs. Uh, the next thing we need to declare is the uh, outputs. So down at the bottom here, where we have these uh, signals being assigned to the PWM to generate our gating signals, we need to move the declaration of this uh, as well because we need to map those out. So we and there will be three of them. So we'll take this guy. And we'll also declare all of these to be zero to start with as well. Okay, so there's everything. Then all we need to do now is to build this. So just build the project. Okay, so if we if we go over what's going on in the processor and loop setup box, this is where we get to define the inputs and outputs to this uh, block, and we get to define the inputs and outputs here. And then we also need to de declare the breakpoint function here with task. So task needs to match whatever this interrupt routine is here. So task and task. And then our inputs are going to be these variable names up here are going to need to be uh, up here here. So we see ADC1 and ADC1 underscore 2. So those are our uh, input variables. And then our output variables need to be these three down here. And then uh, because this is a floating point processor, we get to declare them all as floats. But if we were doing fixed point, we, we could declare whatever IQ number or integer value we wanted here as well. So this frequency here is setting what the sampling rate is going to be. So if we go back to the original simulation, if we go back to the original simulation, we can see that our sampling rate was uh, 10K. Uh, and then if we go back to this is, so that's where that 10K is. This delay is, this is setting where in the frequency we're going to sample. Zero means we're sampling at the beginning of the PWM period. If it's 0 0.5, we're sampling halfway through. If it's 0 0.75, three quarters way through. So it's that's what this delay means here. So what does this uh, gain setting mean? Well, if we go back to the original code here, we can see in the uh, ADC setup that we set up, uh, there were uh, gains originally associated with the input signals. So we're just now uh, replicating uh, that same gain here. Okay, so that's uh, everything. And uh, as I said, we, you know, all we need to do is build this project. We'll, we'll build it again, uh, and then we just need to point to the proper uh, output file. 
and uh, and we should be good to go. Just to run the simulation, we can see that the script has popped up. What is happening in the background is PSIM has invoked um, CCS and um, basically PSIM is running and then CCS is waiting for PSIM so the information is being passed back and forth between the two processors and we get our results again right here. Uh, so something of interest is if we were interested in setting up intermediate variables. So we see in this simulation we, can, we were able to watch uh, theta we're able to watch ID, IQ, and all these other various uh, data points. Um, how do we set these up so that we can watch these intermediate, intermediate variables as well? And maybe we want to control theta. Maybe wanna, we want to control uh, IQ uh, so that we can change the reference, those sorts of things. Well, that's easy to set up as well. So uh, let's just open up Co Composer Studio again. So say we wanted to watch what theta is. That's uh, relatively straightforward. All we need to do is find uh, limit range one and map that out. So I'll set that up and uh, we can rejoin the video. Okay, so I've made some edits to the code. Uh, namely, I've added in two more inputs here, uh, VDC1 and VCC3. What those are, are um, if we come into the code, into the simulation here. VCC3 is setting the reference for IQ. Uh, so we'll map that out to a variable from, from PSIM. And then VCD1 is setting uh, what uh, our theta seed is. So how quickly, um, basically the frequency uh, of, the, of the operation here. So with these two in, we'll be able to control those. And then two more outputs I've added. Limit range one is this guy, limit range one. So we'll be able to watch what theta is so we can see it changing. And then abdq1 underscore one is uh, alpha beta dq1 underscore one means it's the IQ uh, that we've computed. So it's our feedback IQ. So we'll be able to watch what that is. Okay, so uh, I will set up the those in here and then we'll and we'll rejoin the video. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm all set up to add those two new rows in. So I'm going to add in to my outputs here. I'm going to add this variable into uh, output slot 5 and I'm going to add limit range 1 into output slot 4 so I just copy and paste them in and then on my input side I'm going to add uh, VDC1 in uh, as input 4 and VCC3 in as uh, input 5 and then I'll assign a gain to both of these of 1 uh, delay of zero and we'll both go at 10k and so now I'm ready to go and I'll have to remap uh, these inputs to, to get them all set up so we'll rejoin after I reconfigure this okay so I've got my input pins mapped properly so I've got a DC source on theta and uh, IQ and I've got some voltmeters now measuring theta and uh, IQ here for the feedback we just need to build this build project the out file is still in the same place we don't need to change that so all we need to do now is run the simulation you can see the script starting up over here let me just minimize that window and uh, we can still pull up some runtime graph windows and watch what's going on uh, we can still pause the simulation that's still available and we can come over here and we can adjust uh, these runtime variables. So let's change the uh, IQ reference to one. If we start running again, we'll see uh, IQ change and settle back down to one. Uh, if we pause again, let's change the uh, theta, uh, so the speed of this. So let's reduce the speed as well, maybe. Uh, maybe not that much. Let's go to, uh, let's say to one, apply. Uh, and start running again and we'll see theta is slowed down um, we can pause again maybe let's change uh, IQ 
Is that the right one? Let's change IQ back, make it a bigger number now. So say it was two to start with, let's go to three. And uh, we should see this shoot back up and head up to three. And uh, there we are, there was, there's the result. So we're still, uh, the, the results are still merged with the original simulation, which is the, uh, the sim coder uh, lines. And we can see our new, our three, um, our three current signals. So with the resulting change in IQ here, with the, and then we can see the change in uh, theta here, and, and also now the, the change of IQ again to the larger reference towards the end of the simulation. So that's how you set up the pill simulation. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, check back again for more videos, and uh, thank you so much. Bye now.